Okay, so we are back. Um, doing one of our world famous interviews <laughs> with famous. David Eon, the small, collector small world. extraordinaire. Mm -hmm. Am I? Yeah. I so suppose. he um, wanted to address a comment by one of the viewers yeah. on one of the videos. I don't know what video it was on. Um, I don't remember either. <laughs> but he remembers the comment so well that he knew he wanted to address it and he told me to comment but it's long so I don't know yeah and it's it's something it's come up before and that's why this time I was like you know what it's not because of the specific comment but because it's come up a few times that I wanted to address it and it's basically that because I talk about empty shelves in the mm -hmm. stores you know you want to do your G.I. Joe classified series you can't find the Cobra Island at Target you want to get your NECA movie turtles. Walmart never has them. It's not Walmart, it's, tar it's Target. Target has the animated ones. Oh, okay. Walmart got the, uh, movie. Got the movie turtles. We saw the Shredder today at Walmart. At Walmart, yeah, it was Surprisingly. there. The, uh, the Kevin Nash Super Shredder. Yeah, but, I didn't get it because I don't want it. Yeah, she didn't want it. But there was one there. We were yes. surprised. Never was, saw the... Never um, saw one. The Batarangs. No, the neck of Batarang. And so all these store exclusives and all these empty shelves and everything. And the suggestion is collectors actually want that. That they like the idea of the shelves being empty. That they don't want a bunch of shelf warmers. So who wants a bunch of shelf warmers? Who wants to look at a bunch of shelf warmers all the time? And the pegs are filled and filled with action figures that, that you know, after all the collectors get theirs, they're still sitting there. Um, and the part of the reason that a lot of people feel that way about it, and this last commenter actually alluded to this point, that the reason that they want that is because that's how they know they're going to be worth something. You know, if you can't find them, and the companies know that they want the, that the consumers want them to be valuable, and so they, they want the stuff to be scarce so that there will be a value. However, that value is an artificial demand because when it does become available, what happens to it? Somebody comes and sweeps it all up. If, if uh, the Cobra Island stuff from uh, Target, the, uh, the Target G.I. Joe Classified exclusives, only ever seen them at conventions and on eBay. Something's wrong with that. That's because people knew it was an exclusive, knew you wouldn't be able to find it, and someone came in and swept it all up, or some employee made a deal, or something happened in almost every Target, apparently, and they ended up all over the place for crazy high prices. Remember I showed that Cobra Island Trooper mm -hmm. at the when we went to the last show, the... Um, Joe uh, Toylanta? Toylanta. Mm -hmm. And I, I put it up on Instagram. I said, this is what's wrong with modern collecting right here. I think that might be what sparked uh, the last set of arguments. Because the guy had three of them at $120 a piece, but you couldn't find it for, what, 22 or mm -hmm. however much it cost to Target? Why not? Because he got them. Because he had them. There was a bunch of them at the show around that price. Yeah. But you never saw one at Target. And that's a problem. I don't think collectors like that at all. And I don't think that it would bother them if they could go into a store because now uh, the G.I. Joe, not G.I. Joe, Masters of the Universe Origins are starting to show up a lot more. They're in Target, they're in Walmart, and some of them are becoming peg warmers. But everybody who wanted one got one now. Mm -hmm. And so what if it's a peg warmer? In the same, well, cause, because you said that, um, yeah. those... Um, Ghostbusters Plasma series. Yeah. When they initially came out, they came out online only. Mm -hmm. And that's when I got mine. Now they're in the store. They've been in the store for months. Yeah. But everybody that wanted one, because they got made them. it si sound like you were only going to get it online. Mm -hmm. So everybody got there. So now, you know, there's a lot in the store because the people that wanted them got them. You know what I mean? Yeah, and even the Kenner Retros are starting to turn up in yeah, in Walmart, uh, Walmart mm -hmm. as well, and they're starting to be peg warmers. But everybody who wanted them can get them. And here's the trick. All action figures were peg warmers when we were growing up. 
think about this. You remember the toy aisle used to be jam-packed, right? Mm -hmm. How many uh, figures, even just looking around in here, have clearance tags on them? Some pieces, two, three, four clearance tags. Mm -hmm. Like, what was it, your Point Dread? Yeah. You got a Point Dread at the Toy Lanta. It's got three clearance tags on it. Yeah. On the, on the side of the box. It went marked down three times before it sold. Everything was a peg warmer growing up in the, in the 70s and 80s. Some of that stuff sat around for months, years even. You know, it, it'd be like a couple of years later and it's still sitting in the clearance aisle. The, it, what are you going to do? But at least it was there and everybody who wanted it could get it. Nowadays, these companies, they know they're not um, targeting a child audience really anymore. They're targeting an adult audience, but they don't want to make too much because they don't want to alienate their, their true customer. We're not their true customer. Their true customer is Walmart, Target, you know, whatever store or big box store, Walgreens, that's buying these pieces from them. If they've got that stuff sitting around too long and the planogram comes up, they, get, they have to rotate in their new planogram and that stuff needs to move or go somewhere or end up on clearance, the company doesn't like that. And so part of that is pandering to the company itself. And the other part of that is an artificial demand market. Because if they make things scarce on purpose, you're going to impulse buy. You're going to buy something similar, so they'll still make their money uh, for, for most of the customers. But I don't think that if the shelves were loaded, collectors would be upset about that because they're going to be able to get what they're looking for the first time around. And as far as value, if you're being honest with yourself, as an adult collector, you should realize that all these modern toys aren't going to hold that value. There's a, a sharp contrast between vintage and modern in regards to availability and packaging. Basically, when we were kids, we opened with and played with everything. So even good, loose examples are scarce. Most of the stuff is, is long gone, it's been thrown away, it's damaged, uh, sometimes beyond repair. Packaging, finding stuff in the package or finding stuff in the, in the original box or even with the original box is pretty tough. And that's what drives the value up as you try to find better and better examples or sealed examples. Like the McDonald Land playset here comes to mind. Um, that I've got down with my, my Remco McDonald series here. That box is sealed. That's an unplayed with condition McDonald Land. You know how many years I've been looking for one? Because who kept that closed? And when you do find one, it's open and played with and it's dirty and it's all ripped up because we played with stuff. Modern collectors, the majority of them, are, although some do, but the majority of them are not opening anything. All those Origins figures, maybe 80 to 90 percent of them are going to stay sealed. Mego, 80 to 90 percent of them are going to stay sealed. NECA, whatever it is you're buying, people are not opening them. And part of that is because some people like it sealed, and some people think it's going to be worth something because the old stuff is. Well, if you're looking at something vintage like Mego, 70s Mego, where 98% of all examples are loose, incomplete examples, versus nowadays when 90 plus is going to be sealed and perfect, where's the value going to come from? So if you're being honest with yourself, you cannot rely on the idea that a modern toy or action figure is going to be worth a lot, even if there is a price being driven up because of artificial demand, because of scarcity. That scarcity isn't a true scarcity if people are coming in and sweep it, sweeping them all up, you know, uh, flippers or scalpers or whatever you want to call them, and then forcing the price up in the aftermarket. Eventually, that price is going to come down. And you've seen many sharp examples of that with Funko. Mm -hmm. As Funko is one of the biggest in the business for doing this. Uh, because they produce, they're easy to pick on because they produce so much stuff. And we've seen a lot of that. Anything made after 2015 when they went full mass production, prices come way up 
sharply when stuff is getting scalped and then it dips and you had a you had a figure in particular that that happened with who was that was it pennywise it was one of the pennywise mm -hmm. one of the exclusive ones yeah. maybe a chase or an exclusive and when it came out you couldn't find that thing mm -hmm. and i was looking for it on ebay macari not macari because i wasn't on macari yeah um, but with all of the other sites and everybody wanted over two hundred dollars for it so you know i was the, you know i was like okay whatever i'm not going to get it and then several months later it was more than six months later um i was on amazon and somebody had it for 35 dollars yeah because the, the artificial demand had faded on that toy yeah and it settled into a price but that leads me to a um a question i was thinking about it while you were talking mm -hmm. Um, the collectors now, like you said, um, the newer stuff is aimed at the collectors, adult collectors. And those adults yeah. range from, I guess I'll say the lowest age is about 30. Because if you were born, you know, well, if you were born in the 90s, now you'll be 40. But, um, I will say 30 up. 30s. Yeah, the 30s. Yeah. 30 years old and up is who... Because the, 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 the mid-90s is when the action figure uh, market realized, okay, you know what? Oh, that's that's thunder. But I realized kids aren't our target anymore. And you'll see this actually with the catalogs. You know, I do uh, vintage Toy Fair mm -hmm. catalog tours. I, I really wouldn't even bother with one past 1997 mm -hmm. because you can even see in the catalog they don't even care anymore the way that the pictures are all the pictures are suddenly this big and they're in little boxes mm -hmm. with a huge description because they don't even care there's no presentation even but yeah go ahead so the adult market i'll say is from about 30 years old mm -hmm. and up so yeah. once that 30 year old that group dies off is nobody else to sell to so the stuff that you're buying now the masses of the universe origins the whatever's out there marvel legend whatever mm -hmm. nobody is going to want it because the the people zero to 30 we'll say roughly are not playing with toys they're not interested in that stuff so you know do you think it's going to be a demand. Like right now is a demand because we grew up in the 80s, in the 70s and 80s and the 90s. So we're reaching back to that time when those toys were available. But, you know, the kids that were born in 2000, they're not reaching back. You know, they're 20 years old now. They're not reaching back to 2000 to get a something you know what i mean you, yeah. you get what i'm what i'm saying yeah i i think that in the case of what we regard as vintage will still retain a value even if it does backslide because there's a historical value to it yeah but you my know, point this is this kind of stuff's not going to be done again um or you know it could be reproduced but you know it's a reproduction modern stuff i don't know if when modern collectibles become vintage collectibles, I'm really not seeing too many people being interested in that. Yeah, that's what I'm saying yeah. because the people that would be 40 aren't interested in them now. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah. They have zero interest, almost, I'll say zero interest in toys, period. So in 40 years, Will the the kids now in forty years say, "Oh man, I want a a, a Marvel Legend or the M Masters of the Universe Origins or NECA Turtles?" You know what I mean to yeah. drive the price up to a uh, Origins figure being five hundred dollars. Yeah, you, you see what I'm saying? Yeah, I don't see it. I mean, mm -hmm. it. And you never know. You mean you'll have to wait and see. Mm -hmm. But uh, but I don't see that happening. That's why, again, you know, the, the vintage stuff tends to retain its value. Although I would also be careful right now about the sharp increases in certain lines. I know now we're having an entirely different discussion, oh, wow. but uh, that's all right. Um, sharp increases in lines, like we, like the toys that made us, mm -hmm. have inspired a lot of people. 
uh, and it's driven up the prices on Masters of the Universe, on a raw G.I. Joe, mm -hmm. on um, Playmates, Ninja Turtles, prices are, are creeping up again yeah. after that documentary series came out. And you have to be careful with that because those are investors. Those people, they're not really true collectors. They're like, oh yeah, that'd be cool. And they get it. They don't really care about it. They're not going to take good care of it. They, they're not going to appreciate it. They're not going to love it like uh, people that are really into the nostalgia like we are. Uh, enjoy it. And they're, they're looking for a buck. So they buy it and, and they're thinking of it more of a financial investment. And that's, uh, that's a mistake too. I don't agree with uh, looking at these sorts of things as a financial investment. Mm -hmm. But again, at least with the vintage pieces, it sort of has an established value. Even though we've seen some spikes recently, those spikes could still decline back to where it was. Mm -hmm. Still high, but not as high as we're looking at right now. Yeah. But the, the modern stuff, um, I think it's purely driven by the, by the artificial demand market. And that once people become aware of that, as they often do, especially like I said with uh, with Funko, people have figured that out. They're they've gotten wise to it after a while. That those prices will back down again, and the the value will drop off. And we've already seen great examples of that in the past. And I've brought it up often, is the Playmates Star Trek line. Mm -hmm. Very popular. And kids were not buying those. Those were adult collectors buying those Playmates figures. They made over 420 of them. And prices on those were pretty high. I remember um, some of those figures getting close to $100 a piece. How much are they worth now? They're in the clearance bins at the conventions right next to the starting lineup figures. I mean, most of the time you can get them for a dollar or two mint on the card now. It just died. Mm -hmm. But people were paying big money for some of them. So, I, I, don't think that's a, I don't think that's a realistic argument that the majority of collectors do not, do not want to see shelf warmers. I think it, the majority of collectors, hopefully, are wise enough to realize that, yeah, you know what? If you're collecting these, you're collecting these because you just like them not because they're going to be worth a whole lot and would love to be able to go into the store and find what they're looking for and take it home and do whatever they're going to do, you know, display it or open it or have one open and one sealed. A lot of people did that with, uh, what was it, the um, the Mattel, the Maddie Club? Mm-hmm. I've seen a bunch of videos on the Maddie Club, Masters of the Universe. Yeah. Well, a lot of collectors you see that sometimes on all the different lines they the have a car yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. I like that when you got a good setup you can display them both but that's not an argument I hear from collectors that are like oh man I can't believe there's so many of these on the pegs <laughs> you don't hear any Hot Wheels collectors complaining that the die cast aisle is jam-packed all the time because that's always full <laughs> like yeah. wow man there's just too many there's too many choices I can, oh, I found the one I was looking for I don't hear anybody making that argument. It just doesn't make sense. Yeah. Anything else you want to go over? Uh, no, I guess that's about it. Unless anybody wants to chime in on that. Get the, uh, get get the, the conversation, conversation going. going. If anybody has any other points on the subject, you know, they can feel free to throw their two cents in in the comment section down below. And I guess that's about it for now. Okay, I guess we'll be talking to you later. Yep.